Tucked behind Danville Science Center's historic train station is the center's butterfly station and garden. Along the railroad track, the garden appears as a lush, natural display of flowering plants. But there is a master gardener orchestrating this symphony of color. I'm Allison Bellamy, and I'm the gardener at the Danville Science Center. I take care of the butterfly house, making sure that the plants are healthy and the right plants are here for our butterflies and the right host plants for the caterpillars because we do have the entire life cycle going on in the butterfly station. We try to do a lot of the wildflowers and natural flowers here. We want to have plants that the butterflies will go to naturally for their nectar and have plants that the caterpillars, once they hatch from their eggs, will be delighted to eat before they turn into chrysalis and then butterflies. The butterflies will take nectar from anything that tastes good to them, but the caterpillars will normally only eat one or two plants. We have a net covered greenhouse to keep the captive butterflies in. These are butterflies that have been born and raised in captivity. We also have some butterflies that are not native to this area, and we don't want to introduce them to the outside world. Some of the butterflies that are over there sitting on the dry ground are just warming up so that they can fly and go and feed. The butterflies that are over on the wet stones are there to puddle. And puddling is a process by which they absorb water and minerals through the wet stones. We've got this arbor here primarily to hold on this side clematis and on that side we have hops. Clematis being a flower that nectar has gotten from and the hops being a host plant to three different caterpillars. If you notice, in walking around in here, you'll see the little red flags posted in sort of odd places, and that's because odd things are going on there. On some, you'll look very closely at the leaves of the plant, and you'll see eggs. On others, you'll look very closely at the plants, and you're going to see caterpillars just munching away, or you're going to see some in the chrysalis form hanging from a branch of a plant that's near where the flag is. The plants are kept blooming and in such good shape by doing an awful lot of pruning and what's called deadheading. We don't let them get too leggy and big, and we don't let things go to seed. We trim them back so that they'll keep on blooming. And of course, we keep the garden completely free of pesticides and herbicides. Weeds are pulled out mechanically, by hand, and <laughs> bugs, if they're going to be a problem, are picked up and taken out of the butterfly house. Now we do leave the menacing praying mantises in here when they're very little because they go around and they eat aphids and they eat white flies and they eat the stuff that we don't want in here because it damages the plants and when they get too big they go outside to live. And then we do keep ladybugs in here year round because ladybugs keep your aphids down. Over on this side we've got a real nice pond and I have goldfish in it and it's very pleasant for people coming in because they like to look at the goldfish and they like to hear the water bubbling. But it's mainly there to keep the butterflies cool because yes I said they had to heat up but if it gets too hot they got to cool back down and they'll go sit on the cool rocks around the pond and that brings their temperature back down to where they want it. That's a pawpaw tree. Now that is a native tree that we're losing in the wild so if Anybody wants to plant them, plant them because you will attract one of the most gorgeous butterflies going. It's a woodland butterfly called the zebra swallowtail. And he's a large butterfly, black and white striped with a bright red spot just above his tail. And he is losing his habitat because we don't have many wild pawpaw trees anymore. And that's the exclusive food for its caterpillar. And right over near the elm tree, you'll see there's a plate with a big slice of watermelon in it that's scored, and the butterflies are up there, and they're stomping on that watermelon with their feet. It's because that's where their taste buds are, since they don't have tongues, and they don't have mouths like we do. They taste with their feet, and they take their little proboscis, which is their mouth part, and start sucking the watermelon juice. The mirror in the breezeway is so that when people are exiting, the garden, they can check themselves because butterflies like salty, sweaty people. And since you're here when it is warm, they're liable to land on you and start getting some minerals from you. So you need to check yourself and the people with you to make sure you're not taking a hitchhiker out with you. We're open here from mid-April until mid-October. And the warmer the day, the more action you're going to get when you come in here and see the butterflies flying. They don't fly a lot in the morning because it's cool but they'll start about noon, and then you have a spectacular display. 
Every April on the third Saturday, Danville Science Center opens its gates for another season of sunny afternoons in the Butterfly Station and Garden, naturally.